For all you VCR fans, I have a VCR to work on today. This one's a Sony SLV N71, and this is a relatively late generation model. According to the owner, they hauled it out, went to use it, it doesn't work. So we're gonna take a quick look and see if we can figure this one out. So this would have been one of the later model of VHS machines that Sony made. Got the remote control for it as well. And I was told it doesn't work. It worked the last time it was used. And they went to try to watch a tape and it didn't work. Well, there's a tape in it already. That would explain why they couldn't put a tape in because the tape is stuck in here. Anyway, owner wants me to take a quick look at this thing and see if I can figure out what it is. They're going to try to use it to archive their VHS tapes over to digital and they hauled this out and plugged it in and it doesn't work. I mean it looks to be in pretty good shape. And they told me it worked the last time they used it. When I plug it in it does indeed power up and I get a blue screen. Oh tape just came out. Okay well that's interesting. It had a tape in it but when I ejected it the tape came out. Oh it's got a copy of Titanic. Hmm. Well, let's see if it'll play. First of all, let me take it apart. I want to observe what's going on. See what's, uh, see what's happening with it. Might be a mode switch. I was told that it, it, they couldn't load a tape, but as you saw when I plugged it in, the tape popped out. So let me just get the top off this thing. So obviously I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this unit, but I do want to see what's going on when I try loading the tape. Okay, drum's not turning. And of course it's trying to play, but there's no picture because the drum's not turning. So we have a, a drum failure on this, either either something on the drum board or something uh, like need something on the motor board or uh, something on the main board in the servo. So that's where we're gonna begin. We're gonna begin by I'll pull the drum apart first of all and see if there's anything obvious uh, on the drum itself on the motor. Let's see if it'll eject. Okay, it's not even ejecting now. That's weird. Won't do anything. It's just slowly turning the tape backwards. If I unplug it, plug it back in. Now it ejects. Hmm. We may have a couple problems, but first things first, we need to solve the problem with the drum not rotating. So first things first, I'm going to remove, I'm going to mark where it is first. Something to mark this with. Put a mark on here so I know which way it, it faces. assembly and just see if there's anything on here that's, that's obvious. So there's some Hall Effect sensors on here and some resistors and the drive IC is on here as well. Let's just check this one out. If you take the motor off of one of these be sure that you don't let that little spring which is going to pop out stick to the magnet of the rotor here. That's a grounding spring. What that does is that provides a grounding effect for the upper drum. So it just it just presses up against the, uh, I think it's probably a carbon, probably a carbon tab in there that, uh, or carbon electrode that presses up against. And what that does is that just presses up against the rotating part of the drum to um, keep any static electricity from picking up on the drum surface which would cause white streaks 
to appear on the picture so that's important that you put that back in like it just sprung out like that you see that's what you gotta be careful of is that it is magnetic and it will fly out if you're not careful and stick to the magnet and you wouldn't want to put one of these back together with that between the magnet and the actual stator otherwise you'd end up with a ground up spring a ground up magnet and a stator that is shot Okay, first things first, I'm going to check the continuity. There's some um, zero ohm jumpers on here. The way it's behaving, it's behaving like there's no power. And I haven't checked it to see if there's any power yet. I'm just going to check this first, see if there's a problem on the on the actual motor control board. Otherwise, I'll go back and look further back on the set. But I'm just going to check some things quickly here to make sure I've got continuity through things such as coils. Yep. Good. Next one here is another zero. That's good. That's good. That was good. this it looks like there's a well you guys can't see that it looks like there's an area here where the where the um, rotor may have been rubbing right there right on that trace there look at that I can see if I can get a closer up shot it looks like that the, uh, it may have been rubbing Doesn't it? I wonder if that has severed that trace. That looks like that goes from. If we look at this, it looks like it goes from this jumper here, goes across, and ends up over on this one. I wonder if that's where it's open. Maybe if I could just bridge over this area right here where it looks like it's scratched. Okay, I'm just going to try and apply the lightest amount of solder I can. Let's see if I can just bridge over that area where it appears to be scratched. right in the corner here where it appeared to be broken. Now, yeah, I got continuity now. Okay, so um, I'm gonna try that and see whether this thing fires up. It's about probably all I can do on this.
this way. All right, let me just plug the unit in now and see if anything different happens. Let's see if that drum will fire up. Oh, look, the drum just turned on. Excellent. So it's now going to spin. So I'm going to put a tape in and uh, see if it plays. I guess I better shut the sound off on this if it does. And I have a picture. Obviously, I, I can't show you guys this one, but I'll, I'll put another tape in. But it is playing. So let me just grab a tape that I can show you. I can show you the Bose tape. There we go. So it's fixed. And I don't think I'm going to need to do anything else on this. Make sure I got sound. Prepare to give them the home theater experience. How's the remote control? Is it working? Good luck and thank you. No, the remote's not working. Remote control is not working. I wonder if it's sending out a signal. Let's see here. Night shot. No signal. wonder how the batteries are. Let's check them. So, the mechanism appears to be okay. Let's eject the tape. Now, of course, I'm going to clean the machine. I'm just not going to do it on camera. There's no point unless you guys want to actually see me clean the heads. Do you want to see me clean the heads? I've done it a hundred times before. Just use a piece of paper soaked in isopropyl alcohol and press it up against the drum and rotate counterclockwise. And there was not much really to speak of as far as dirt goes. We clean the audio control head the same way. I can use a piece of paper as well or I can use a, a cotton bud Q-tip, whatever you want to call it. Same with the erase head and the pinch roller. The pinch roller had a bit more dirt on it than anything else. And the caps and shaft as well. Okay, time to put this one together and then we'll tackle the remote control. Just make sure it plays this tape. Which it does. That's all I'm going to show of that, because that's the tape that was in it. So that's the tape that will be going back with it. Let's uh, see why the remote's not working. It's not sending a signal. So it could be something as simple as bad batteries for that matter, but let's see. Oh, I think I found the problem. It looks like batteries have gone corroded. What type of batteries are these? Yeah, IKEA Specials. Made by Varta for IKEA. Made in Germany. Oh, uh, yeah, from 2008. You think that might be a reason why they're leaking? Both of them are leaking on the negative terminal. We're going to clean the crud out of here. I don't know if it's gotten in. Oh, it's got six gotten onto the board too. So I guess I'll have to take this apart and clean it up. It's definitely on the spring terminals. We'll clean this up. Um, it's going to go get a Q-tip and put some uh, vinegar on it. These are alkaline batteries, so how you counteract alkaline battery leakage is with uh, a mild acidic solution, acetic acid or vinegar. So let me just go get some vinegar. Got a Q-tip with some vinegar on here. We'll just put that onto the contact and let it bubble away. That'll take off any remaining corrosive crap left behind. And uh, that should uh, fix it up.
try another set of batteries in here and see if that works. Hopefully that's all that's wrong with the remote. Let's see if it plays. Uh, sending out a signal now and it plays. So the remote works. So there you go, now the remote control is now working. You can see I can stop it, eject. So this one's fixed. Give the guy a call and let him know he can come and pick up his VCR. I'm not making any money on this. You know, the second hand store sells VCRs for like 25 bucks. So there's no money in fixing this. But at least I can buy myself lunch. Thanks for watching. Catch you later with the next one. Bye.